Omar and her allies now using a new tactic against Donald Trump and the GOP. So after the president dinged the freshman rep in a tweet over her insensitive comments about 9-11, the freshman rep said that the mere criticism of her was akin to the incitement of violence. The media echo chamber, of course, was quick to highlight her concerns. The freshman congresswoman says she has seen an increase in direct threats against her life after President Trump tweeted a video mixing footage of the congresswoman who is Muslim giving a recent speech with footage of the 9-11 attacks. Nancy Pelosi is asking the U.S. Capitol Police to conduct a security assessment for Congresswoman Omar. The speaker is one of many Democrats now accusing the president of trying to incite violence against the first-term lawmaker. Joining me now is Ben Shapiro, the Daily Wire's editor-in-chief and author of the brand new book, the right side of history, which is fantastic. Ben, now, this isn't about free speech. This is about downplaying one of the darkest days in our nation's history. Your take. That's, of course, true, and she has a long history of not taking terrorism particularly seriously. In 2013, she did an interview in Minnesota in which she joked about people taking al-Qaeda and Hezbollah more seriously than they took America and England. And then in 2016, she wrote a letter in which she tried to have a judge be more lenient with people who tried to join ISIS, saying that, of course, these were people who only became violent because of American marginalization. And then in 2017, she wrote a column for Time magazine in which she suggested that America was rooted and founded on slavery and genocide. And in order for us not to look that in the face, instead, we focused on international terror. This is not someone who takes terrorism particularly seriously. So I am bewildered as to why quoting her would constitute some form of violation of her personage. It would be a violation of free speech or something nonsensical like that. Uh, ben, just so people know what we're talking about here, I want to play that soundbite that you're referencing uh, where she talks about the way people say al-Qaeda. Let's watch. Think we... When I was in college, I took uh, a terrorism class. Every time the, the, the professor said Al-Qaeda, he sort of like his shoulders yeah. went up and, you know, yeah, he's in command like, here. Yeah. Al-Qaeda, you know, hospital. An... You don't say America with an yeah. intensity. You yeah. don't say England with yeah. an intensity. You yeah. know, you don't, you don't say um, the army with an intensity. Well, and Ben, ben uh, Pete Buttigieg, we talked about him earlier. He's the, he's the new star of the Democrat Party. He's edged out Beto O'Rourke, and now he's taken that uh, spot in the spotlight. He talked today about the consequences of otherizing people like her. I thought you'd love this. Let's watch. One of the worst things that's happening right now is otherizing people. And if we're wondering whether this has real-world consequences, look no further than what happened not long ago in New Zealand. And yes, by the way, the president demonizing Representative Omar is part of this. It's dangerous, and it's got to stop. Otherizing, Ben. Well, very odd, since Representative Omar has three times in the last three months been chided for openly anti-Semitic statements, and then the Democratic Party has defended her. I'm amused to watch as the Democratic Party suggests that criticism and quoting of Ilhan Omar amount to violent incitement, where Representative Omar can say whatever Jew-hating thing she wants on a daily basis, and that is not incitement. Now, I agree, it's not incitement in either case, but to pretend that it is incitement when it's stuff you don't like, and, it is, and it's not incitement when it's stuff that you do, seems pretty irresponsible at the mildest. Ben, thank you.